Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Not Conscious. With Mark Poles and Chris Woodsy Peralta. From the home offices in Gilbert, Arizona. Back on you. Back on me. I love when you say, get off me, man. Get off me. <laughs> Mike, dude, I'm not on you, you I know, but I, I feel like violated. <laughs> I'll hug you later and buy dinner. I'll cuddle. I mean, I'm not they, like I'm, it's not like I'm a, you know, going to bang you and then leave. I don't need the camera. What are we talking to, about? To mount me. <laughs> I mount the camera. It doesn't mount me. <laughs> Depends where it's mounted, bro. Depends where it's mounted, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> how, are, how are you, sir? I'm good. How, how are, are you? you? Happy rainy Sunday. Yeah, yeah, January 24th. Rare, hard rain here. Oh, yeah. It hit hard here. I don't know oh, yeah. how bad it was in and the G-Town. And the G-Town, town, also Tambien. The treehouse got soaked, my friend. That's what I'm talking about. That's rare. It's a rare. Yes, uh, it's weird that it rains in Phoenix. Rare, but a beautiful day. Uh, we have the the window slightly open, a little crisp, fresh air coming it's in. It's lovely. Is, is it a little cold? A little chill? No, it's great, but bro. nice. No, but I'm, it's not I'm bad. A, I I guess my blood thinned because. Oh yeah, I'm we're from bitches, East Coast, dude. I used to be. We're little bitches. <laughs> used to. I remember playing uh, soccer in the snow with shorts. You know, stuff oh, like that. God. That was that was us. But please. uh Hey, may I say it again? Get, Get off, off me, bro. bro. <laughs> We're referring to the camera uh, being on check mark for too long. So, not conscious. Yes. We have a documentary I stumbled on which upon which I stumbled upon which on the Amazon Prime. And it's free. Yeah. What's it called, sir? Zero days. And what's it about, sir? It is about the cyber attack in 2010 on a Iranian nuclear facility. Is that did I did I summarize that correctly? That sounds very correct. And if you were George W, it would have been nu- nuclear, nuclear nuclear. The strategy yes. of the Iran mission accomplished. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> We've gone through all that. Oh, that's uh, some funny shit. That is, I just love nu- nuclear 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 nu- versus nuclear. It's like realtor. Do you say realtor or do you say realtor? Realtor. Okay, I say realtor. Is there I know a it's wrong realtor. way to say it? Yes, it's spelled. It's spelled real, real a tor. tor. Oh, there's no a. It's no. real tor. Yeah, correct. Okay, but everyone says real a tor. Is this episode about how to pronounce shit? Xerox. Xerox. <clears throat> Kleenex. I don't know. Realtor. <laughs> yeah, realtor. Real tor. Re- realtor. Real alto. Most most people say like my realtor. I sold my house. My, call my realtor up. That's how people in Philly say. Yeah, over there they do. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, stumbled across documentary by Alex Gibney. Who's that? Alex Gibney, I find very amazing because he has a shit ton of documentaries he's done, including Going Clear, which was big. The and that's the that's the Scientology the Scientology one. one. Okay. Uh, so an Enron one, the one, the HBO one about uh, the Theranos with the woman with the thing, Elizabeth with the blood, Elizabeth. Something. I need to watch that one. I haven't seen She's it. It's creepy. Every time I see her, when I watch that document, when I watch that documentary, it was like it puts a lotion on its skin. The way she talks, it's so creepy. oh, she has kind of a man voice. It's she weird. does. You does she want to tear people's skin off and use it as a lamp? Allegedly, she wanted to make a valuation of $9 billion a, a worthless company. So, you know. Um, I might watch that later. You know what? It's a very interesting one. I'm on, I'm on a weird documentary kick, but like some of these are very interesting. So what we found about this, this was about just cyber attacks in general, how this came to be. This specific one was about Iran, correct? Yes, sir. And do you want to elaborate a little bit more about the particulars in this? What, what, I don't, you want to. Like the story, the timeline of how, how we want to start. Are, are you asking me you a question? Notes? I did not take one. I have, I have two, I have two points. Points. That's, so my notes are very thin today Uh-oh. and they are more towards the end, towards the end of the, of the two hour documentarian. So this is going to be nice and short then. It, 17 minutes. Excellent. Zero days, 17 minutes. How many it's pages hour, of notes did you minutes. take? I took no notes. Shut the front you would door. take notes because I overtake notes. So no, I, I did not take notes because this is your idea. So this is so we're um, awesome realtor. Basically, what happened? Basically, what happened with that? It's so crazy the timeline because in 1981, 
Israel helped and Iran work together to bomb Iraq, Iraq's nuclear facility. And that was during the Iran Iraq war. I think correct. Yes, but then it was afterward didn't we help Iraq defeat Iran in Iran Contra, which was shortly after that, correct? Eighty six, right? So I'm thinking like right? So like it it we how many times when you say did we, we you mean the 90, United, United States, States of America American government? Yeah. Not necessarily the people, but yeah. the government's activities with those Middle Eastern countries. Yeah. How many times have we flip floppy flop flip? Well, they wear flip flops in the desert because yeah. I know because I live in the desert and I wear flip flops. Flip flips. Uh, just like Jesus. No, I wear Obi Jobies. Tevas like Jesus. Birkenstocks. Birkies. Jesus. Is it, what are they? Jesus sandals. Jesus. Jesus what? Jesus cruisers. <laughs> I thought they were just Jesus sandals. I don't know. There's a term I don't know what it is. Jesus swear. Yes, he is. Does he swear? Jesus swear. He does not. Swear. No, that's against the fourth commandment, bro. Oh, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not take my name in vain, bro. <laughs> What, Jesus can't say fuck? <laughs> say fuck in Jesus' name? <laughs> Fucking Jesus. <laughs> anyway, we we find this interesting flip-flop in a way because, like, they they start with 2010 and, or 2006 or 7, 8 with the beginning with Bush and putting Bush together. Bush Jr. Bush dubs. W, sorry. The Chinese. And uh, then we go back to 1981. So Israel was with Iran. Now they're against Iran because allegedly what happens is Belarus, is that the country in which the virus was initially founded? That's the country in which it was discovered. And yes, the sir. virus we're talking about is Stuxnet, correct? And we're not talking about a virus in the sense of medical virus. We're talking about a malware virus that's made via a computer and sent via the internet to infect someone else's machine to do something bad. Yes. So Nothing it's a computer like term COVID. virus. No, computer it's not virus. like COVID. At all. It's a computer virus. Computer software programmed to affect systems or things or to have some kind out, of action. To give outside entity control. Yes. To either monitor or take action. Take out, and then doesn't, take, doesn't necessarily mean harmful. It means it could just grab information yeah. and, you, and then use it against you, et cetera. Yes. Like classified information. Cybersecurity, bro. Excellent. This virus then is discovered in Belarus, but uh, Symantec, right? I think it, no, Symantec's the one that they that took it. They, they took it. To. They uh, the gentleman in Belarus that discovered it. That was a really nice guy in the gray suit, right? No, that wasn't him. He the, was the guy on the video call that that spoke in part English, part Russian. Okay, that. Got it. Um, that was the guy who discovered it. Oh, yes. Then he put a, a note. Warning out or He something. put a note out on the internet uh, on a cybersecurity page. It says, hey, I found this. Please check it out. This is incredibly disturbing. And then there were multiple comments underneath that, like, wow, we need to look at this. Wow, that's amazing discovery, et cetera. Then the two Symantec guys got involved. Yeah, and that's Eric Chen and the other guy was less talk. He was English, yeah. British. They were interesting guys. Smart as shit, yeah. shit, dude. Oh yeah, they just the way they the way the deductive reasoning of how they came to discover what it was. So they find this virus and they're like, WTF is this? <laughs> Basically, That's exactly right? what they said. I mean, I think they actually said w, hashtag WTF. WTF. I think they tweeted it out. They go, Hey, we just got this virus, y'all. WTF. What the frack? One of the interesting things I found early in the documentary was the complexity of this thing that was written, this code that they found. Yes. And they said most are decoded in a day or two or something like that. Or yes. the entire virus. Yes. This, they're a month in and they're just starting to figure out it's quote unquote payload or and its target, its objective. Well, yeah. What is it designed to do? Yeah, not Where is it designed in. to go? Right. And there's multiple levels within that. Right. Which and is it's crazy. a month in. Yeah. So... Do you did you understand the zero days conversation? I absolutely did. Okay, can you share it because I'm I'll be honest. I watched it twice and I'm still a little confused what zero days means. Zero days means that there is no warning. That that malware will infect a computer and it will sit there and you won't even know it's there. And then it's designed to execute when a certain threshold or parameter is met. And the people that own that system have no warning. 
Hence, no warning, zero days. Okay. You've got no countdown clock. Like, this software is going to go take a shit in two days. No, right. there's there's zero warning. Right. Okay, so a lot of them are like ransomware. Yes, it's like, absolutely. Give us money in the next 10 hours or else, right? Correct. Where you're talking about this zero days thing is just an immediate uh, launching of the code or launching of the application. Basically. Or launch executing the program, the program itself right without it, it could sit there right it can and still not sit do there anything and be dormant, right. in f- for infinity right? right as long as the system is powered but it on. gives no warning it's not for a purpose of warning correct uh, like a like a ransomware or some other ones that just want to fuck with you for yes example okay that makes sense and they said that this particular code had four zero days programs in it yes correct and the total that year was how many was four 12 Right. Oh, was, okay, yeah, 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 right. 12 total, including those four, I believe. So they're pretty rare. And there was not one since. Cur- I believe that's right. So, or at least in, you know, the document, I mean, maybe. Which was been released in 2016? Ago. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but, holy macanoli. That's just so interesting to me. Um, perhaps I'm jumping ahead, but what I found most interesting was the layers of the code that they kept explaining over a two hour period and how the code is supposed to sit there for 13 days and do nothing. Then it's the second part is, okay, it's going to execute section B, which means it's going to try to infect a certain device. Then section C, the third zero day, it's supposed to do something else to trick the systems that it's messing with to think everything's fine. The complexity of the code, I thought was, and I'm not a coder, so I don't, I understand the basic theories and concept, but I thought it was genius at how deep each section went that I found that mind boggling. What was interesting was the actual virus wasn't large in size, but the file was so huge because it had to run on its own. Right, it had to be autonomous. It had to be able to spread on its own. Remember, they it was going to yes. be air gapped. So yes, they knew they just had to get it on the system, and then it was going to enact itself. So Correct. even though the file was like four times or something larger than any other file, or some they said some number, that it was not, and it, it didn't have any bugs either. That was the other thing. It, it was, was a very clean. There was no program. You what the what the two guys from Symantec said was that most malware files most attacks like that usually there's little clues or have errors yeah errors or little clues little pieces of bread to find a trail right so that a hacker will not do something correctly not on purpose but yet that's how Symantec and antivirus companies will find out the purpose of that of that code and there was no mistakes at all yeah they found that really interesting so it was but like so this thing is huge so it had to run on its own, but then they later find out the one that got their attention was version 1.1. Yes. And then they started going backwards. Yes. Because they're like, well, if there's a version 1.1. Yeah. Maybe they were pre- maybe they were previous. So they start looking for this code backwards, right? Yes. And they find previous versions, 0. 0.65. Or I think yeah, like 0. 0.5, 0.5 was the was lowest. lowest that I saw that we Cor- saw. Correct. Or at least they showed us whatever, yes. even if that's true or not, it doesn't matter. Right. Regardless, there were previous versions. They they confirmed that. Yes. And maybe they didn't give the exact version because they don't want to like, you know, dox it either, because that could be dangerous. Yes. No Who doxing. Who knows? Yeah, no doc no doxing. <laughs> Doxones? Okay. Yes. No, doxing? Not okay. Debone. <laughs> T-bone, no touching. Um. Anyway, the point of that was, was I don't remember now. Poop. What were we talking I, about? I, I don't. I don't know. Damn it. Would you like me to move on, or yes? Are we gonna sing the Jeopardy song? Damn it. I so need, I, I, think I think I need the Jeopardy song. I think l- let's make it clear that it was. I'm gonna. I'm gonna reveal a. Uh, what do you call it? spoiler? Spoiler alert! That the. What was determined after months of research and trying to figure this all out was that the, you, do, should I go down this road or not? Say, I don't even know what road you're going okay, down because you know, it's such okay. an open conversation, right, man. Fucking hate. This is they what it's about. That, we love talking. That uh, the people that wrote the code and deployed it 
put it on several laptops of companies external to the Iran nuclear facility where those technicians would take their laptops or USB sticks and then go to the facility to do work. That's how they infected the nuclear facility. Then it was infected, part two, it was infected on a PLC, which is a little tiny computer that connects to motors and engines and tells them when to turn on, when to turn off, how quickly to run, and a bunch of other things are along that line. So what the point of the virus was to infect a little tiny machine that controls big machines. Is that all accurate what I said? Yeah. Okay. The whole gist. I just wanted to make that clear because it's. I think that's incredibly important that the people that designed the virus, they weren't attacking, a, a, you know, an Apple desktop. Yeah, we'll they, talk, and we'll talk about were, that next because I were, want to talk about the balloon experiment. Yes, they were that. purposely trying to infect a certain piece of hardware, Correct. which I found fascinating. Yeah, well, that was the thing about this. They, they were so specific in its attack. Yes. That's what they found. They found the Siemens and then some other guy. They had an email. Some guy jumped in to volunteer. He goes, oh, there's model numbers attached to everything. And then they saw the model numbers. Oh, those are these model numbers. The yes. Siemens 9500, the Siemens 7500. And for those that don't know, Siemens is S-I-E-M-E-N-S, is a manufacturing company. They make yeah. all kinds of hardware. I think they're German, I believe. Sure. I mean, I know that they, they even make phone systems. So they yeah. do all kinds. Very high tech. Yeah. I mean, they do all kinds of hardware and machinery. Global production yeah so the plc was a primary logic controller is that, i don't remember i think, that's, I think, I think that sounds right primary logic controller meaning sure. basically computer talks to it to give it commands or it has a command built into it to execute a mechanical piece to yes. your point a pump a filter uh any kind of anything motorized Motor, device right, motorized device anything well in this case what they did was they found this that model number and they found they hooked up that model number to like a little air pump and they yes, programmed that they it. hooked up the PLC, the PLC to thing, the air pump, a Siemens model. I think it was a 9,500 H the way they talked about it. They hooked it up. They gave it a command to blow up for five seconds. The balloon would blow up for five seconds and stop. And then it was inflated, which Wouldn't, that was what it was designed to do. Yes. That's, that's what it was programmed to do, designed to do. And that was in the programming. Yes. Fixed hard, hard, hard in. So then they executed the virus in, it infected the, in PLC, the PLC, and the PLC, then they turned it on to run its five-second blow command. Yes. And then what happened, bro? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, oh, it's on you, It bro. blew yes. up way more than five seconds, and then it blew up. The balloon popped. It was just because kept going. The, the PLC had a, was tricked to ignore the original command and blow up the balloon and run crazy and not stop. Yeah, it just basically continuously ran. Yes. Till the till the balloon exploded. I thought that was extreme extremely simple, interesting experiment. Yeah, absolutely. To show yeah. how devastating that could be. I mean, just not even talking about the ethics or anything of it, but just something like that existing. Yeah. And at a water filtration plant that we need every day or electric any type of infrastructure. Any, yeah, any utility, uh traffic lights. I bet you yeah. you could beer Google and see where are PLCs used, because I mean you're talking. Are they used in cell phone towers? Are they used in you know I don't know, but like you said, water filtration. So it looked like they were a lot of the PLCs are a lot of the infected areas were places that had like facilities that had pumps and motors and things like that. Yeah. So radio cell towers, I think more digital electric with electric current and whatnot. Okay. But yeah. it could less have, motors. I mean, it definitely has a server or something like, attached to it. Yeah, a, 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 yeah. Some kind of control. Right. I think a PLC is just more like a simple end unit that connects to the final product. That's right? absolutely correct. So it seems like it's kind of like its own piece needs to, it can run autonomously if it has to, mm -hmm. but can get updated or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty interesting in technology and it's amazing. Yes. But uh, imagine that affecting any, to your point, any of the infrastructure. Around the world. Yeah, around the world. I mean, the may I go like way down the rabbit yeah, hole where I, my brain yeah. went on this? No. Oh, man. Oh, poop. Yes, go. How long How long has that been? Bro, why is that on me, man? Because you're going to talk. Damn it. What were you going to say? I was going to say Can that. Can I go down the rabbit hole? Go. Yes, the rabbit hole is this. Yeah. Uh, auto, auto, a little, autonomous? Autonomous vehicles are a reality. They're coming 
It's it's going to happen at some point. If we don't destroy ourselves, it's going to come 30 years. Like, maybe. So you're talking about self-driving cars self-drive, and self-driving autonomous. trucks? Right. Okay. And I think there's going to be a point where you're going to have to have maybe human lanes and autonomous lanes for a while and split them up because the interaction between the two, because humans are less rational and computers are extremely rational. True. Uh, that would be very interesting in how they communicate, right? Like, I don't know. A computer doesn't intend road rage. It may cut off by accident. It doesn't intend to. Yeah. But it may make that decision, right? Where that's the best course of action of all the choices it's given, for yes. example. It does that. The lesser of all evils. Right. right. But the person to cut off could be human and be like, right? Yeah. Well, at some point. My grandfather. Let's go down the road. Every, All cars are autonomous. All of them. Oh, yeah. We've okay. had this conversation. You have a special... You'll have a special circumstance where you could have an antique car, like a classic car or something that, you know, you could have a certificate. A 68 Camaro. Yeah. Yeah. You can have that as a special thing. Or a 2016 Subaru. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. A classic. The 2016 Subaru Impreza. Instant classic. (laughs) Monafique. Magnifique. Magnifique. Oh, shit. Magnifique. the, The Subaru Impreza. 2016. What a good year. I know. What an excellent year that I was. Know. Um, nice bouquet. So here's a PLC, whatever, just infects that system, in, speeds everybody up to 90 miles an hour, and then instantaneously turns 90 degrees left. Boom. Or, you know, each lane into each other, basically, through some logic system. That would be not a great time, in my opinion. Uh. Be really that would time. be murder, death, kill. Yeah, murder, that, murder, death, kill. That would not right. be good. Right. Especially if they're all in the same network, of course, in some way. But at some point, maybe you could just sit dormant and infect everything. And then when it affects a certain percentage of the vehicles, that's when they do it. Because that'll still have carnage for the remaining. Yeah, even if you're if 52%, <laughs> if, if half the cars. <laughs> motherfucker. Hold on. 52%. 52%, bro. Even if 50, what if 53% does that? Fifty-two point six percent. Okay, I was just checking. How then specific we're you getting. would still have road issues right. of total craziness. Yeah. So that was one I always just jumped to because I feel like autonomous at some point seems like it'll be more of a reality than science fiction. Oh yeah. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Because I, it is ultimately safer if we're all autonomous and they all kind of run at the same speed, distance from each other, and whatever, and they make all the com- commands with each other because they're all logic systems. Oh, I bet like you if they're all safer. intertwined, if right. they're all networked together. And I think that's the ultimate goal to be for safety's sake. That would make a lot of sense. Now, for privacy's sake, that's a whole other conversation. But for safety, we're just right. talking about the functionality of it. We're yeah, not I understand. About, a whole different conversation not going down that rabbit hole. yeah but i was just thinking down about that what are your thoughts about the, the the cause for concern about something like that well i think you're uh, regarding the ai portion or regarding the privacy portion well, the or virus, regarding the virus portion the virus infecting cars yeah well obviously to have them yeah smash into each other basically. because you're th- th- they made a very good point on on the documentary that you're always going to have software updates you're always going to have firmware changes. You're going to have upgrades. So, and I mean, that's a big part of my job. And it it's a necessary evil. We get it. There's always new vulnerabilities. And there's we always have to address those because that's the right thing to do. Right. So if those systems can be kept up to date and you try to eliminate the possibility of... The, everyone going to 90 and making a left, if you try to eliminate the possibility of that malware being executed or even being loaded because those those vehicles, are they going to get their software via Wi-Fi? Are they going to get their software via, okay, every night when they come right. into their whatever, they're going to get plugged into power and they're going to get plugged into the internet, right? I mean, or some sort of network. I'm kind of a futurist and I'm going to guess that at some point we're going, I'm just talking about at its most... Advanced advanced stages of autonomy. They're going to talk to each other, share their own speed, directional data to each other. Like we're already the, doing that with ways, in, right, right? Like Bluetooth, like within our proximity, but automatically to each other while they're driving next to each other. And like, they're going to have hey, GPS I'm going to look down the freeway. And you're going sixty two. Yeah, hey, I need to whatever. do something. Yes. Right, whatever. I just feel like there's going to be a lot, a high end of bandwidth communication between vehicles operating in the same area 
the, uh, yeah, and that's why for safety, right? Correct. For the autonomous sake and for the safety sake and all that. I feel like that. That's how you spread it. It just you just need to get into one, and then it just goes into all the other ones as they talk to each other. I so I, I, I whole, see. I understand your point. A whole pack of them get infected. Thirty, forty. Yeah. Boom. Or if because you know, I know it's a, it's a concern if you don't keep your software up to date yeah, you're more like vulnerable tesla, like the tesla yeah, has updates constantly. i'm sure they do because i mean just look at your iphone or your samsung there's new apps updated daily and there's new ios updated quarterly something yeah. to that effect and what's great is you could have an antivirus update on the software and in that software is a virus that's not that's detected by the antivirus. entirely possible right that, and that's basically probably how that would be carried over i mean hey we're updating the uh the antivirus software and that piggybacks because it hasn't detected that yet. Because the only antivirus software only knows what it knows. It knows well, yeah, it's it, it good looks as for the certain people things. developing it. Right, and it looks for certain triggers or certain marks, right? Yeah. In addition to stuff it knows about. Well, it doesn't always know everything. And it didn't know about this thing until they knew about it, until they really yes. dissected it. Yes. But this thing is so interesting in how it worked. Yes. So in this case, it affected the Siemens 9500H, 7500H machines or whatever. The PLCs. Those are connected yes. to centrifuges uh, centrifuges correct sir Is that correct yes and that was to um uh, centrifuge out uranium correct or to enrich uranium correct to okay. refine and refine. enrich uranium okay. correct I, sir. and it, i kept seeing them play with that stuff i always heard that term yellow cake uranium that's that's in refined right or yeah well it, they were scooping that stuff in the plastic bin yeah i look that's what i guess that must have been i assume so yes uranium. yeah so anyway i mean don't get me wrong i got a little confused with okay the like how they how they the make uranium 236 material? versus they didn't get enough into it for me like you know I, I love the geeky stuff like i really want to get in nuts and bolts on like how they did it like not obviously so i can make one in my basement but so, <laughs> Do you, you don't so have like, a basement oh yeah that's true too we're in arizona barely yeah step one Get a basement. Step two. <laughs> How to build a world. nuclear me weapon. Build, get a build, basement. Build, get oh, a shit. I, oh, I can't do it. it. I'm oh, out. I'm out. I'm already out. Step one. I can't even get to step one. It's, how's your Lego project going? Amazing. How far are we on the Millennium uh, Falcon? The Millennium Falcon. I'm on 25 okay. hours plus. I'm on step 825 of 1315. Is there an estimated time that they've given you what it would normally no. take the human being? Like, hey, not. some people at this pace would take like there's a clock in their corner. I did not beer Google that at all. I no. just did I'm just it saying own. if it was on the instructions. Like, no, oh no, so I like didn't. A stopwatch is like, hey, 18 hours in, you're probably in this range. No, okay. I didn't. I didn't see that, and I didn't look for that. Yeah. I just you're just following the steps. I went to page one, yeah. and it said take out this pack. Beautiful. And then I cut the pack, and, and then did, I started piecing everything together. Did it say get a basement? Start, it did not because okay. this is not a nuclear lego it's not a nuclear no lego. okay not it's, a nuclear no. falcon it has a hyperdrive so, so I, have, I have two very important things speaking of this yes one speaking of lego the nsa person i and let's be clear the person was an actor is a woman who's an actor and they said it was many people who's yeah many people statements correct yeah so one of the people in the nsa full shit man why do you say that Bro, did you not pay attention? No, uh, I, I did not. So in this documentary, the woman talks about... The paid actor. The paid actor woman. Speaking on behalf of the statements of the NSA. About these nerd holes that are in her, in her quote unquote, her cubicles. Yeah, let's cubicles, just stay with her. Her offices. Yeah. Because we don't, because it's multiple people. So it's her in this case. Yeah. But her is they. Their offices. Mm -hmm. One had a yellow cape, hooded cape. Yeah. And did what? He built the Death Star. Yeah, but out of Death how Star. many? Out of Legos. The motherfucker <laughs> said Legos. That is right. I paid, <laughs> I paid clear attention to this, sir. I I, I was hoping you'd catch it, but no. he goes, she, she even says, right? She says, oh, he even made all these out of gray Legos. He made the Death Star out of all these gray Legos. And I'm like, <sighs> instant debunked. The entire story is well, bunk, my friend. Bunk. Well, it's if you Lego. look at that, because I saw, I you know, I heard her say, and then I saw the Death Star. That's not. That's just what you can buy out of the package. I know, but that was just. It's a not documentary. like he made it from. Right. We, we don't know. Right. You're you're correct. We but they showed know. the Death Star correct. on someone's cubicle. In the dramatization. In the dramatization of the correct. documentary, it was the 
first Death Star that was open with like the it's, characters. Yeah, that's not the one that was closed. Isn't there, there a bigger one that's I closed later? I don't think there's a closed one. Okay, because that one I would be interested. I don't like the open one. Yeah, I don't like the open one either because it looks junky. It's like not it's to weird. scale. It's, it's, it's dumb. Not to scale. It's dumb looking. Yeah, it's not to scale. I mean, I it's, do like the trash compactor, and you know, there's some cool stuff. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, just like that. Um. Anyway, it's a dramatization. I, I believe they used that the one that you're talking about, like the kit. But yes. the way this person talked about it, it could have been the kit, but we don't know. But this person's just like gray Legos, and I'm like, bunk lady, you are bunked. <laughs> it is Lego. Okay, that is point one. I I'm gonna go further because I think point I well I like throwing levity throughout. So let's let's pause on that. Let's get back to some heaviness about this. What was the second bunking? That's what I'll talk about later. Oh, okay. I thought fun. you were gonna go one two. So they're gonna go through and. They interview the a gentleman who used to be at the in, International Atomic Energy Association or whatever association, the the, the global organization that monitors Agency. every single nuclear facility. Yes, Russia, U.S., U.K., all that shit. Yes. So that's Ali Heinen, and his haircut was glorious. Uh, he had very much like a haircut like this, and the Boris Johnson guy. Do you remember his haircut? Because he had like the Finnish accent. He was. You know which guy no. I'm talking about? The guy with the really, the older guy with grayish hair, really moppy hair. How did I forget that? Oh my gosh, bro. I How didn't even drink when, when I, I didn't even drink watch? when I was watching it. Are you sure? Yeah, no, I was like, I got to stay sober Only to watch Heinen this shit. Heinen, my friend. Heinen, Heinen. Bless you. The guy with the really bad haircut. Anyway, he talked about how he had visited the facility a couple of times. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And now like, I got it. Like when they initially yes. opened the Iranian radiation nuclear facility, they initially said it was going to be a uh irrigation desert irrigation yeah, system right uh, okay yeah we buy that and then anyway so they talk about him and what's the i'll go to the levity right now what did that make you think of did it make you think of anything when that guy started talking no i'm, I'm maybe a little the sweetest chef okay oh that's very good it made me go right to fucking Team America. Where he's like, <laughs> why I busting my balls, Hans Blix? Oh, shit. Because Hans Blix was actually in the IEA, -E oh, whatever. Oh, I, -E I didn't know that. A I A E A. The IA International A uh, Atomic Energy Agency. Okay. I A E A. Anyway, Hans Blix. Why I busting my balls, Hans Blix? Remember because they fed him to the goldfish, which oh, were the sharks? Shit. Yes. Or the catfish. Okay. They were catfish, weren't they? I think they tore them apart. I got you. Puppet. My bus, my bird, Henry. This is unacceptable. We can't have this. Oh, come on, Hans. <laughs> can we be friends? Oh, that was fucking hilarious because it was North Korea and their, that. And their yeah, nuclear right. thing. But the second I saw this Oli Heinen guy, I'm like, Hans Blix. <laughs> I don't know why. So that was funny. So Lego and Hans Blix. Those are my two funny parts, I guess, so they weren't that funny. If I laugh at myself hard enough, like I do at my other jokes, yeah. will, it be, will it be funny? Yes. I'll have to remember that. Um, next, on here, what do we have? They find the earlier versions we were talking about. Yes. The earlier versions were a lot more subtle. Yes. I have a question for you. The way, did they imply that the 1.1, the other versions had already started working and then 1.1 worked too like it was too strong or it none of it worked until this 1.1 version was launched i don't know i didn't understand that part about what the difference was in the versions previous to 1.1 i didn't right. i didn't understand the purpose of the previous versions well this is what it was the the previous versions seemed to be more subtle so like you had to hit enter or something or double click oh, to like spread it okay for example a manual However, intervention right but when they were firing the Iranian scientists, was it one of the earlier softer versions where they just had no fucking clue what was going on? No. Shit was blowing up. No, that's, that was 1.1 because, so, okay, let's back up a second. There were two, I think there was, there was there two centrifuges that blew up, right? It was multiple times. There were whole sections removed at one point, so they don't know how many were blown up. Okay. It was, it was a very- two incidences then? The Natanz incident- is the one that the woman, the NSA person talks Natanz about. Natanz is the, is the nuclear that's facility the nuclear site facility, that right. we're talking about. And that's the one that they hit. Yeah. Now, I don't know, but it happened multiple times. 
Okay, they got okay. To, to your point, let's stay on target. I am. Good job. The the two Iranian scientists that got fired got fired because they could not determine why the centrifuges were blowing up. Correct. My question <laughs> is: Was that one of the earlier versions of Stuxnet? Because the the later version, they realized that what exposed them is that computers started crashing. Remember, she started saying no. things started breaking, no. and that's how it was exposed. That's no. how it got sent to the no, other guy. Things started breaking, bro, dude, because the Israelis changed the code. Right to the version one point. That's the version one point one. Okay, one point one is not. I don't think is the American version. Is my point? I don't know because I think that's what they're implying. I think they're implying that one point one is the inv- is, is the, the aggressive I- Israeli version. Okay. So my question is that okay so. Was it an NSA one that was initially working well and they couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on? Or was it until this aggressive version that was done by allegedly the Israelis? Was that the one that actually ultimately made it work? I don't know. Well, we know that the one that was edited by the Israelis or so everybody that that was interviewed stated. Alle- allegedly, for sure. The, the, they advised that the Israeli edited version, Suxnet is the name of the virus for everybody. So to explain that. And we'll put that in the notes. Sure. Stuxnet. Uh, the Israeli version was too aggressive in the fact that it got out from, it wasn't just PLCs. It was other systems and those systems were shutting down. That's what raised the red flag. Correct. And it was as aggressive. So I'm wondering, <laughs> But was that the one that caused the Iranian incidents that they couldn't discover and kept firing people? Be- or was it a more subtle version? That's I. That's really the I ultimate don't know. question. I don't know. Did is The question is this. Was it working the whole time? And then Israel's like, it's not. I want it to be more. Yes, I understand. And they got point. greedy. I don't know. For example, the greed took over and they wanted more damage, right? Yes. And that's what caused this. And that's how they got it to the five into one. Where I think... What five and one? The where they went, where they downloaded in the four uh, contractors that took it to Natanz. That's how it originally got infected, right? Correct, and that, but that's version one point one. I'm, I'm one. Remember, they had inside inside people too that were spies. And we could, we don't we don't know that, but we would guess that well, there were implications of that yeah. by the NSA person. Right. She wasn't going to name. She wasn't going to name right. names or dox anyone, but there were implications that she said air gap was never an issue. You know what I mean? Yes. The version 1.1 is the one that the first five places that were infected were those area Natanz and then those other four places. Yes. However, which were the where the contractors worked that were originally infected. Yeah, I'm wondering if if and this is something they can't talk about because of the classified nature of it, right? If one of the earlier softer versions Yeah, we don't know. For lack I understand of your term, question. Got in. Yeah. And was working and shit, you know? So, that done, they discover it now it's out. And it can around do, the world, right? The other thing is now Iran has a cyber security team, that, uh, or cyber hack team, or what? What would you want to call it? Iranian cyber army. Cyber. Yeah, I knew it was army, but I didn't yeah. know what the la, what the middle one was. Iranian yeah. cyber army. Right. We have an anti cyber. Israel has a cyber unit. All these places now. Yeah, we have the U.S. Cyber Command. Yeah, the cyber you know what command. I mean, which is in the same building as the NSA. Yeah, and that's why I found really interesting. The NSA doesn't have the authority, but they have the ability. Correct. Cyber Command has the ability, but not the authority. Or right. has the authority, and they work but not in the, the same building. And they 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 share an office. <laughs> it's just that. Well, then that's convenient. So Do let, I, feel like I think we're jumping all over the place. Yeah. So let's go back for a second. Yeah. So the two geniuses at Symantec, which is an antivirus software company, analyzed the analyzed this virus, and. Crap, what was my freaking train of thought? <laughs> poop. There's poop everywhere. They analyzed it and they found things. They analyzed yes. it. Yes, okay, yeah. thank you. They analyzed it to the point where it. we mentioned how good the virus was. And there was no mistakes, there was no breadcrumbs, there was no hints as to what did this. And over many months, they determined that the the fact that it was so perfect... And no one had taken responsibility for the infection of the Iranian nuclear plant and or any of the other computers, devices, et cetera, around the world. They believed that a nation state, quote unquote, 
was to blame for the development of this malware and the deployment of it, which led them to believe that it was the U.S. government. And that's important. In conjunction with the Israeli government. Right. The nation state. So there were the person stated there were three reasons or three people who are interested in hacking. One was for some kind of profit. Second one was someone who had an agenda, like a you know a political act, like an activist. Yes. And then the third one was a nation state who's trying to do something like that. And in this case, it started. All signs were pointing toward nation state because yes, of the cleanliness, the effectiveness of the and code. how complex it was. Yeah, and and where and where it infected. Let's not yes, kid ourselves. The, the Iran nuclear facility that's trying to make enriched uranium so that it's possible that. Iran could have a nuclear weapon or yeah. nuclear weapons. And it targets the PLCs that that thing uses and those centrifuges that they also tested. Yes. <laughs> All those things, right? So that was an interesting thing too, right? How they got the centrifuges to do what they did. Yes. So this is, it affected the PLCs. PLCs affected these centrifuges. Sped them up, slowed them down. Yes. Changed these thing, these parameters. They tested them. I don't know. How did they get these once they tested, like George W. Bush is standing by this shipment of centrifuges. Yeah. And I forgot how they got them. But anyway, they got them and they used them to test them. And that's how they came up with this this software to do this thing, to, to damage the centrifuges. So, well, there was, there was Iranian news footage of their nuclear facility, like pictures of the centrifuges, and you could determine the model of it, right? Right. So there you go. There's your, you don't even need, you don't need a CIA guy to walk into the facility and realize what it is. No, no, it wasn't that. It was how we got them to test, like what those were about, the way the NSA was person was talking, and she's like, yeah, we got some shipment of those exact models from some country, and it's like, why did we need them? You know, in a weird way, like, why would we order them? Because it seems odd. Because it was an Iranian company, I think. It's like, why would we I order I have there? no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll move forward because well, you, you want to have some lapses here, sir. Uh, I'm concerned. Oh, okay. I'm just, Thank I'm, you. I'm not concerned. I love you, man. <laughs> um, so we're continuing. They yes. find this code. It affects these specific things. Now we go forward. It's discovered because because this thing is so aggressive. These semant it comes across. It's as shutting guys. down other systems yeah. besides PLCs. It, yeah, it's fucking up. It's it's outside the box. Yes, and now it's alerted a counter cyber company, but they're pointing the finger at the United States. Yes, the NSA person clearly stated in their accounts that it was them. Yes, right. That Stuxnet was them. The name of the virus. And that yes. Israel changed it. I'm not saying that that's true or that's not. That's what saying that that's person what the said. That's what the documentary stated. Yes. It stated that Stuxnet was created by the National Security Agency? NSA? U.S. Cyber Command? NSA, NSA. created it, which is National Security Agency, I think. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right. yeah NSA. You're right. And then, and then gave it to 8200, which is Israel, and Mossad. Which are the Israel? That's the cyber anti, command right, of Israel. Of yes, Israel, eighty two hundred something. Yes, and then this claim is that they made this aggressive version that got discovered. Correct. And if it wasn't for, in a weird way, it's almost like if it wasn't for their aggressiveness, maybe we wouldn't have even gotten discovered. Correct. However, they did imply that Obama was like, "It'll get found at some point," which, of course, it will. Because everything, everything always does. does. Yeah. That's the point. Everything always does. What's interesting, it did go into two presidents. Yeah. Bush Jit Jr. Touched on the Trump barely? No. Nah, didn't get there. We yeah, well, the I think this was released when during the election year. Yeah, I think Correct. it was released that year. So. I but I wouldn't be surprised if they're still I mean it showed Reagan with signing the nuclear armistice yes. and stuff. But generally it was just it was Bush Jr. and Obama, uh but Obama's administrations. Yeah, so, it was yeah. the 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 virus was developed in during W's terms and then executed during Obama's term. And then I found the thing. I, I shared it with you because it's, it is just, I'll just gloss over it. But the thing on Obama's website about protecting whistleblowers 
that need to be protected, blah, blah, blah. And then they get discovered. Snowden leaks about them. Oh, right, yeah. And all of a sudden, they, that will not be tolerated. Leaks, you know, just calling it a leak doesn't mean it's not whistleblowing. Well, and they also tried to prosecute a four-star Marine Corps general. Right. And I was like, that, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's a way to, way to. Uh, okay, yeah. I think that's weird, but okay. Yeah, I, those kinds of things concern me. Like they were trying to pin it on him, like yeah. he was the, he was a scapegoat. Yeah, well, they said he was the one who leaked it to the other to the David Sanger guy, I think the 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 news reporter. Remember okay, because they said the he was Times the guy? leak. Yeah, yeah, that David Sanger was really interesting. Too. He was, I yeah, absolutely. You know who he reminded me of uh, the Swedish chef. He reminded me of no, that was Ali Heinen and then that was Hans Briggs. Um, no, uh, he reminded me of Steve Forbes a little bit. Okay. The the reporter? Yeah. A little had a little Forbes in him. I can see that. Yeah, yeah just yeah. a little kind of like, you know, yeah. traditional white dude. Pasty white guy. Yeah. But he was incredibly Very, intelligent. Yes. And he had contacts Man, all over the world. Everyone. And it was like a the investigative journalism that was very, very impressive. Yeah, and that's what's great about these documentaries that Gibney seems to put together. They have a lot of, they seem to have a lot of teeth and a lot of credibility to them. Yeah. So it adds, obviously it adds to the story of like, is it, are these things happening? Is this true? So the concern now is we attacked, well, the, the allegation is that we in Israel attacked another, a foreign entity about, you know, and sabotaged them. Is that an act of war? Yes. Mark, is that an act of war? It's an act of aggression. <laughs> uh, war. Well. If it hurts anyone. If it blows up a, a nuclear. Such a fine line, right? I, I mean, so it, if you're just infecting someone's iPhone, that's one thing. But if you're infecting the nuclear production of a country that could kill if that plant blew up that that would be super bad that's not I, that's really really bad so i think i think it is an act of war because the consequences could have been historic and well they're gonna be that's the concern right because well now, if it did blow up you know right. what i'm saying well i'm saying it's the reason it's historic is because the finger pointing still at us even though we haven't acknowledged the u.s has not acknowledged no a one has single act no Correct. one has no one has however the allegations are very strong pointing in the NSA person said they did it. It's pointing in our direction and Israel's direction. Correct? That's the those are the allegations globally. That's what they think. Regardless of what the truth is, Iran believes it. Regardless of what the truth is. Yeah. And they always will believe it's us against them kind of thing, right? Yes. Yes. So they create the counterterrorism that's cyber. Now they're gonna the, attack us. That's the cyber army? And there are two that, yeah, the Iranian cyber army. They shut down a bank and they, uh, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and uh, the third one. Yeah, another one. It wasn't Chase, it was- No, uh, it wasn't a really, really big one like Bank of America or no, Wells. No, it was and Wells, but anyway. Um, and then it also did some power plant or something or shut down a power grid. I think there were two attacks. Yes. Regardless, we had, we have now declared war on a, on a sovereign nation. From a cyber perspective, not right. with weapons of traditional means. <clears throat> right, because there's no laws really in place about Correct. whether that is an act of aggression. When the Air Force started, what was airspace? You had to say, well, if we it's didn't... over our country, that's our Right, airspace. but there was that but was a new term. It was a new term because when you flew overhead, you're like, well, I'm not on your ground, I'm not on your land. Yeah. It's not yours. That's not yours. Yeah. So they had to define these things, Correct. Right? these parameters. Correct. So I find that really interesting. Like, what direction do we go there? So two questions. Act of war. Are, so yes or no, dude? It is an act of war. It, 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 it damaged something and could have potentially hurt somebody if someone was there. We don't know. We don't know how damaging the effects were. Correct. So we don't know if someone was killed or if those scientists were killed for their disobedience, for blowing it up in the first place and it wasn't their fault. Correct. Right? They've assassinated. How many people were assassinated? They talked about a handful Several, of people. Yes. Right. Handful of people. Like somebody standing behind the guy looking at the computer screen. Yeah, behind killed. the prime minister yeah, of Iran. Yes. Yeah, it just seems weird. I mean, and I get it. That's kind of their MO. It's like a gang kind of thing. Gang mentality. Gangsta. Ye true. But... Um, yeah, if, if any harm was done, anything, but it did already have personal or property damage. So yeah. But what, okay, hang on. So what if this 
malware infected a shoe production facility. Is that an act of war? Well, I think it's an act of war because it infected a nuclear production line. That's, does it get more dangerous? I mean, chemical and biological warfare, nuclear, does it get any more dangerous than that? Right. That that's my point of why I think it's an act of war. Right. Because it's nuclear. Right. It's it wouldn't be an act of right? war if it programmed all the smartphones to have fart noise ringtones. See, so I support that. <laughs> right. Like that would be that funny. would be amazing. Like, hey, from the USA, Iran. You want to hear something? That'd be funny. You want to hear something funny? No. When Echolima yes, was I, in I, the I'm Air sorry. Force, I do want to hear something. Funny. When Echolima was in the Air Force, uh, he was the phone guy in Panama, the country. And he programmed about the Van Hales dog, not Panama City, Florida. Oh, okay. but Panama. He programmed all the phones ringtone to be Panama from Van Halen. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love that shit. I love that. I went right to that too. That's, that's I love it. Yeah. So yeah, if you if if the United States government and Israel pro- pro- programmed all the Iranian smartphones to have uh, dogs barking jingle bells, yes. You know, constantly when it, when someone calls or texts. Okay, that's not an act of war, but it is like you violated their system, regardless of what the actual like outcome. It's still a crime, right? But is it, it's not an act of war if you change the ringtone, I mean, right? That's let's not be stupid. But the implication is, if you can do that, you can yes. do more nefarious things. So, Correct. is the just the acknowledgement of the ability to do something like that, even that simple? already dangerous enough to say, well, I can do a lot more. I'm just being very kind to you. Yes. So is that like an act of some sort in its own way? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I absolutely do. Okay, and I curious. agree. It's, it is the, it's showing the infected that there, that there might a, a nation state or a hacker has the ability to do right. something of that nature. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely think so. They're peacocking, but, yeah. But it still is dangerous. So is that an act of war if it's still dangerous? Because it is really ultimately dangerous, though. Well, I think it has something to do with the outcome and what systems were targeted. Like I said, if it's a shoe, if they're making Skechers, is that really, dude, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Right. I I agree with that 100%. The other point of that, too, is... um. Words, 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 gosh, darn other, it. other words. Oh, I had it too. Do we got brain farts today, bro? I, t- I know. Why are we brain farting so much? I, I don't know. I got, I'm hungover. I'm brain gassy. And you're, I'm brain you're, gassy. I got brain gas. I got brain gas. But, um, well, the other side of this is the nuclear side. Now, what are your thoughts about the nuclear side? Do we, as a sovereign nation, that promote freedom and rights and individual rights and states' rights and all these other things, right? We, we're the beacon of freedom, right? America. Yeah. How can we dictate what another sovereign nation wants to do? I don't think we should. Right. So in the nuclear sense. But yeah, this has nothing to do with cybersecurity or right. this is a more general. I, just, I want to get into an ethical question yeah, about I, that. I, I understand. Because I, I knew this would expand to this just when after I watched it. Because I want, I'm really interested in your thoughts on just the general idea of these things. Once again, we're not taking a side. We're asking these questions because this interests me. Is like, what are your thoughts on um, our dictating a <laughs> sovereign nation? <You> dictate. <laughs> A sovereign nation of its own. What what gives us the right to call them evil? Yeah, I, I yeah. I, look, yes, the atrocities they did, but remember, uh, Iraq was our ally when when right. Hussein killed we hundreds of thousands flopped. of his own people. Yeah, and you know, like, let's not kid ourselves. We've supported some horrible people. Yeah, and it, you know what? I don't think it's easy. I don't think our job's easy either. Like, we make mistakes. We we have to, of and, course. And generally, well, when we humans, make a mistake, right? yeah, and the size of America is when we make a mistake. Tends to be a big one. But let's like it, let's it put the shoe in the other foot. Yeah. Let's say America wanted to develop some new technology that possibly could be detrimental. Let's say Lithuania says, "No, America, you can't do that. That's not a blah, 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 blah. like if th- th- somebody acted towards us the way we've acted towards other people. What? How would the United States' reaction be? Yeah. 
that's I don't think we ever think about that. Right. And if and if they did to us what we did to them, we could call it an act we of war. We would absolutely probably. call an act of war yeah. and there would be retaliation, yeah. just like Iran retaliated right. on Bank of America and Wells Fargo. Yeah. It'd be the same so I don't right. and that's why they went into the private sector. I think they were smart to oh, yeah. to hack to not hack the government. I mean, I think let's be honest, I think that was a very smart move. Yeah, absolutely. Because you you don't need to hack the government to do real damage in some ways. Not at all. You can you hack, could like the said, power financial grid. facilities. Right. Power now power is semi government, but Sometimes. if you attack like banking stuff. Yeah. You know, which is the private sector, yeah, of course. Yeah, the private sector. Like, yeah. You can do some pretty nasty things without oh, yeah. actually attacking a government entity. Well, I mean, the one gentleman said, what happens if you shut down the internet? If that's even possible. Yeah. Or if it's possible, let's say you shut down 5% of the internet, would that have a repercussion where it would just snowball and other parts of the internet would go down as well? And that would be, okay, now we're at 48% where it's down. Right. The gentleman's point was, that would affect everything. Your ability to use an ATM, your ability to get gas, your ability to use your Wi-Fi speaker at home to play music because there's no connection to the internet, right? So the effect of that and how dependent upon the internet the Western world is, is borderline scary. Yeah, communication in general, even oh, yeah. cell phone text. Well, yeah. That. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. And it's all wireless now. Y like, yes, even though the switches might be computerized even on hard wires, but we don't really have hard lines really. We don't really run them anymore. They're not connected or they're not activated. Uh, right? I mean, for the most part. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, you know, you're, all of our computers are connected to a, all yeah. of our computers are connected to a wireless router or a cable, a wireless cable modem or something to that effect, right? right. Yeah, exactly. So this is the other thing then. So the nuclear part aside, um, well, the... We obviously have nuclear capability. We're the first ones to actually use, I think, first and only. Yeah, there's been only uh, two bombs, bro. And but multiple countries have tested. Yes. I think six countries. I think I believe that's correct. If I may, let's run it down. U.S., U.K., U.K., Russia, Germany, Germany, France, Israel, I, Tur Pakistan, possibly. I don't know. Israel has it. I wonder if they make it though. I don't think they have nuclear. Do they make nuclear stuff? I don't, I don't think they have know. space. Do they? I don't know, man. Anyway, but like only a handful, of, like maybe less than ten, I think, countries have nuclear capability. Yeah, it's. I think it's six. Yes. How are they governing these other bodies? It's like I have it. Like it's my ball. Yeah. Like, and, but but it's a fine line. Like, a what gives them the right? This these are the two sides of the argument, right? What gives them the fucking right to tell this country what they can and cannot do? What gives them the right to think, to deem them, judge them evil or whatever? Uh, yeah. Well, that's the United Nations, right? Right. Saying you can you can or you can't do whatever. And then secondly, how do we still protect ourselves from evil people who could do nefarious things with bad things and still dance the line of freedom? Like, it's a fucking really challenging line. Yeah. All the time. I mean, you, it's so nuanced. Do you think that, okay, this is my thought. Let me know if I'm full of shit. So let's say I no one steps in and Iran does develop nuclear weapons five years ago, whatever. Do you think I Iran would use them against Israel or another country? Because if they did, they're assuring their own destruction. Because you know the U.S. or Israel or somebody else is going to nuke them. That right. the, And... That country would be removed from the face of the earth. Right. Why would you be dumb enough to use a nuclear weapon? M mutually assured destruction. Yeah. Do you well, think Iran would use them if they were allowed to have them? Depending on the person who has their finger on the f their version of the football. Y this in the sandbox, in the sand let go of my toy. Yeah. Yeah. There are some megalomaniacs if i can't have of, of, it no one can is that the thing where some people just want to watch the world burn like is well, that what you mean? i don't know if they want to watch it but some i'm i know there are some that enjoy watching it burn that's its own segment i'm talking about some people who just are like if i can't have it no one can i'm destroying it because i because i'm unable to have i it guess my myself. question is that that the prime minister of iran who yeah. is 
saying that, you know, we found the virus and yeah. uh, this is an attack on the, on our country by the United States and Israel. Yeah. And now we, and then a couple of years later, there was the nuclear agreement with Iran where there, they will not develop nuclear weapons. Oh, and there are so many So that gentleman, on that that, I don't even agree with that one either because I read into that one as well. The prime minister, he's in charge, right? The, of, the, of of Iran of Iran and, yes. and his and their Iranian nuclear faci- facility development of nuclear power nuclear weapons yeah would that guy have the brain power to realize if I use this shit my country and is gone I'm my family's gone right. I'm gonna die this is where it gets interesting so that's the other question of it what gives these six countries the rights to tell them? I don't, I don't think. They're but the other question, the is, United Nations to answer your question. Right. No, but, but, but the truth is you and I are like, that's not fair. We're yeah. not ju- It doesn't seem fair, even though we think they're not great people either. But aren't we, don't we live with not great people and we have to, cause we're all in the United States. I like, think we're just not, we're just as not great as everybody else because okay. we're all Excellent. human. Yes. Yeah. So that's the first part. But secondly is like, when you when they talk about nuclear weapons, we first gave it to the Shah, for example. Yeah. Hey, what? Thanks, Lyndon Johnson. Hey, thanks, Nixon, for making it fucking stronger. Hey, thanks both both sides of the fucking aisle for doing that. Correct. Thank you, everybody, for fucking that one up. Yes. Like, let's not kid ourselves. Yes. Because oh, Pakistan and Iran should build something together. What a fucking great idea. Yeah. Okay. To bomb Iraq. Yeah, and then bombing Iraq in. 81 remember they gave the yes. initial facility in 67 was like the first one yeah it, way long right. ago way long ago under johnson like yes we were talking, correct or at least started yes yeah, correct under. and then nixon took that and carried it and yes thanks um but we get to that how is a nuclear weapon a defensive measure of your country it's not it's an offensive weapon right but it's a it's because the, of the mutually assured destruction correct. portion of yeah, it. Yeah, that's my belief. Yes. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't sound defensive is just because my stick is as big as your stick. It doesn't sound that doesn't sound defensive. Defensive sounds like I will protect my homeland from invaders. Invasions. Yes. I will protect my air from from being flown over. I will threats, etc. Yes. Yeah. But not initiating a nuclear strike explosion yeah strike how is that's not defensive it's it's not a defensive act you i don't how do you justify a defensive act in that case can you enlighten me because no maybe there, I just there's don't no way it. well there's that's not a that's not using a nuclear weapon is offensive obviously right having them is is it neither if they're never used is it neither offensive or defensive is that is that your question well the, the thing is the the claim from Iran was how how can Germany have it and or how can you in the UK have it and you say it's for you know do you defense but we can't use it for defending our country or defense for us it's like it's not a defense I never saw nuclear weapons as a defensive measure I agree it's an every weapon is I I feel like that one is about as offensive and offensive offensive it's offensive <laughs> It's about offensive. It's about as offensive and offensive as one weapon yes. could be, right? Um, so, what are your thoughts about that portion of it? Like, should should anyone have? Like, obviously, no, I think you and I not. would agree that no one should have nuclear weapons. No, of course not. We can have nuclear power. Why do we submarines. even need nuclear, we have power nuclear power when? Right. Well, nuclear power is pretty clean for what it does. For, it's compared, still incredibly dangerous. Right, but compared to coal, like the, new, the why, newer stuff is, is much better. But go ahead. Why have nuclear when we can have solar and wind? Well, yeah, but solar and wind requires batteries to store, which is other drilling, other resources like lithium as well. And shit lithium like that. and shit like okay. that. Right. See, this is the thing. We talk about all these clean energies. The only real truly clean one would ultimately be the fusion, where we create a mini star. And they're working on that. Great. Just, that sounds awesome. I just watched another amazing documentary called Let There Be Light. Oh my fucking god. There's like four companies trying to create a mini star in on the earth. A contained star. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, isn't it? One liter, they they claim that one liter of seawater, if they can get this thing hot enough to run itself, like to the temperature that it fuses itself and then just generates and just needs the fuel, like the hydrogen. One liter of seawater is equivalent to 350 liters of petroleum fuel. Wow. That is fucking amazing. Yeah. I was going to share that one with you. Maybe we talk about that someday. But anyway, digression aside. 
tangent. Womp, 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 womp. That's that a file a, cabinet, bro. I'm so sorry. That was beautiful. I did not mean to. It kick. wasn't thunder from outside. Thunder. Do it? do it again. It's like, hey, tell me if it's thundering. Oh my gosh, it's scary. <laughs> I'm scared, sir. Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> um, so, final thoughts on like the defense versus it's not. It uh, doesn't seem defensive. Is no. it more because of the mad thing, the mutual assured destruction, right? Uh, that's my belief. Yes. Okay. What I also found interesting. It involved W. Right. We talked about involving George W. The yeah. Second, the second right. One. And how he didn't ever mention anything with Iran and nuclear. We didn't know. We didn't really hear about it till really till Obama. Really correct. And the reason was because he had floundered so much on the WMD in thing Iraq. With Iraq. Correct. How interesting that is, because to me, he's a lame duck president. It's two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Why not? What, 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 what more, what, 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 what a great audience, what more could it hurt? What, what could it hurt to divulge it at that time? I don't think it would have hurt. I think it would have hurt his ego. I think he, because he, he everybody knew he was wrong. Everyone knew he was not the, the smartest freaking guy. So now he has an actual credible, it's like you've been crying wolf for seven years and now you're going to cry wolf again, but this time it's real. No one's going to believe you. The whole part of the yeah. cry wolf. I mean, yeah, is that he did it again, right? They didn't believe him. Yeah, but this time Plus it's he real. Also, didn't want it. Well, he also didn't want it to be wrong, and, or the pundits to say it's wrong. Remember, like there was a leaning media agenda to an extent. Absolutely, and he didn't help. No, with mission accomplished, for example, like, that. and he didn't help with correct. You know his, you know some of his misspeak. Some of his stuff was a little blundery. Like, of course. Uh, I can't imagine how I'd react when someone whispered that a plane has been flown to a fucking tower. But the look on, of loss on his face, like, he looked like I have no fucking clue what to do. Well, would uh, anybody? He but he didn't look angry. I didn't know. I don't know what the look felt. I don't know what he, like, I didn't, he didn't see anger. He didn't, you know, he looked, it was like, his blank, it almost seemed blankish. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. Look, whatever it happened, you know what I mean? I don't know how I'd react, but like I said. But he was pretty much criticized for some of his, like, bumbleiness. Uh, know, what, yeah, absolutely. Deputy dogish kind of. Yeah. I don't know what the hell. Yeah. What's, like, what's a good car cartoon character that uh, would have represented? But, I um, like Deputy Dog. That's that's pretty good. But, yeah, I just, once again, I just found how it, once again, went president to president, Bush to Obama. Right. But that's from this... The cybersecurity right. perspective, and then and then to do aggressive or offensive maneuvers versus just using it yeah. to keep people out. But to to your point about why didn't um, Bush W say something in 2007 about these Iranian nuclear development? Was he scared it would tarnish his record? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, if he did, if he did or didn't call it out. Is it a no-win situation for him as the lame duck president? Did he not trust the information? I mean, they were talking That's about- That's possible too, right? They were talking about doing a virus to destroy these centrifuges that were making radio. I, I felt like they had the correct data. Well, the yeah. Correct, uh, data. I mean, they did show that- Quote, unquote, evidence. They did show that Obama was looking at the blueprints of the power plant and all the centrifuges. So, you know, someone said that. We right. But I'm, I'm just, even under W, though, it seemed like they'd all known because he launched- the cyber security. I felt like he was the first one who launched the attack on them in, to begin with. And that's why I feel like it's one of the earlier versions of that Stuxnet or something, or at least started working on Stuxnet or something. Yes. Right? Yes. Some Pete, several people came to president George W and advised them of this idea instead of bombing the nuclear facility in Iran or having Israel do it. And then us mopping up and pulling us into a war. Hey, we have an idea about a cyber attack on the plant. What do you think? And he, he gave them the green light. But the documentary advised that Obama is the one who executed it. He actually put it into production, put it into whatever, okay. however you want to word that. Yeah. It was so interesting, though. Um, and what did you, th that Secretary of State guy, the Mike, whoa, I forget his last name. The bald guy with the glasses yeah, drinking the Diet Coke? Glasses. Yes. 
Yeah, that dude's that that dude's probably seen a lot of shit. Semi diabolical, but it's also like love is candor. Like I gotta be honest, anything that's not classified, he was happy to. Well, share. he was the director of the NSA and the CIA. Was that correct? And the Secretary of State at some point, I think. Yes. Oh, I didn't see that part. Wasn't, but it, wasn't that's who he was next when he was with Bush? He had right? two titles. Yeah, it, it was, was director N of CIA, CIA and director NSA. of NSA. Yeah, correct. So think about all the information that that guy's seen and forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and to be like, yeah, that's not important. Somebody just went to war. Yeah, that's we don't care about that country. Move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, think about the number We're not of on things our radar today. Right. Yeah. Maybe in a week. It, yeah. Not until right? next week. Right. Yeah. Somalia. Who? <laughs> Shit. Whatever. I don't know. Just Bosnia and Herzegovina. What? You know, and like things like that. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting, though, isn't it? Um, how candor, how much candor he had. I really like what I liked about what made me kind of admire George Bush Jr. Because I don't know him. I don't know him from anybody. We only you know, know I thought you met him. about him. Oh, yeah. Seems like a great guy. Great guy. Chinese. <laughs> He's an Astros. Texas Rangers. <laughs> um, what I admire is like he always wanted more options than bombing or the bomb. Yeah. I thought that was a cool statement. Absolutely. Like, that is an, you have to admire the out of the box thinking of that. Because you would argue that some presidents, it's only those two options. Yeah, the more military <laughs> aggressive, there's of course. Some, there's some pretty, but there's some pretty basic ones out there. Yeah, that would be like, Duh. I'm gonna beat the shit okay. out of you. Right. I'll hit you with the bigger stick. Yeah. You know, and look, it was kind of the was it Roosevelt speaks awfully carry a big stick. That's correct. The first one. Yeah. T R. Teddy, Teddy yes. right? It's a great statement, right? Because it's like it's not about puffing out your chest; it's about backing yeah. it up. But absolutely, you don't talk shit. And like, I don't know. I just feel like um, one thing. My one of my favorite guys, Coach Lee Corso, on College Game Day says is, "When you lose, say nothing. When you win, say less." And I love that because your actions should speak for themselves. I like that too. Yeah, yeah. Like you didn't need to hang a banner reading "Mission Accomplished" on like, a carrier on a in two thousand three when, when there, there was, was no still mission and, and, and it wasn't and, and there accomplished. Was, after that, the three thousand more troops died <laughs> for no reason. Right. I'm just saying when there was no mission and there wasn't accomplished yet. Yeah. Uh, regardless, but obviously, once again, hard decisions to make. Right. Of like, course. Sending all yeah. these people. Trump. The drone on that general guy from Iran. Right. That's obviously after this documentary. Yeah. That was last year, right? Uh, yeah, I think February of last year. It's coming up. 2020? I think it was okay. either early 2020 or late 2019. I think it was 2020. Okay. Um, but that general, um, I forget his name. Anyway. Yeah, general, Iranian anyway, general. Who, yes. else, who else died in that strike? Uh, of the, who, uh, other people. Yeah. How many, how many, not just innocent, but people who aren't targets, regardless of Correct. Their guilt or innocence. Correct. Um, and completely, obviously, unacknowledged and completely un like it's not like uh, we're declaring anything on them. How is that not an act of war? I don't know. Like, is that an act of war? Are we at war? I, I'm if confused. you have a drone drop a bomb on somebody, isn't that an act of war? It, feel, it feels. I mean, like don't it. they have the right to retaliate? Did it happen in Iran? I don't know. Or were they in Iraq or something? Were they in another country where we got away with it? Like. No, I'm just saying all these things are very interesting to me about those ethics of it. It's not... Uh, or with, lack. Right. Without taking a side, I'm very curious as to, is nucle is having nuclear capability defensive? Because everyone talks about the defense of our country. Or what's the right of us to say they can't have it because we think you're going to use it for nefarious purposes because we think that. But we were on your side t 40 years ago in 81. And 67. And way before, right, up until, well, up, well, basically up until we took Iraq, like, help Iraq, and then we hated both of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, basically, that's kind of what happened, right? Didn't we go, did we go, hi, Iran, hi, Iran, and then we went, hi, Iraq, hi, Iraq, and then we said, fuck both of you. It's kind of, kind of what we did. That's a very good summary of the last 50 years, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and it's, this isn't a, I'm, I'm really talking in a very non, like, emotional, like, angry, negative way. I'm curious, what are these answers, right, or what are these questions? Mm -hmm. So do you have other points that you wanted to share? You yes. said you had a couple. I have so three. Please, okay, share Get your off tray. me, man. I have Get three. Me, First is the fact that the Department of Homeland Security had no idea about this virus possibly created by the U.S. and Israeli governments. It was brought to the Homeland Security's attention 
the, they interviewed the director of Homeland Security at, at Sean McNeil at the McNaught time, or sh- and he whatever. was never told by anyone to stop investigating this. And it, they investigated it so much that there was a Senate hearing about it. And the whole time, the NSA and the Cyber Command and multiple presidents said nothing. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, okay, well, number one, think of all the money the American government wasted in that Senate trial, Senate hearing, about a virus that possibly the own, its own country created. What kind of shit is that? Yeah, the left arm doesn't know what the right arm is Why can't you just case. pick up a phone and go, hey, man, I'm up on the 19th floor. I know you're on the 16th floor. Uh, this is the fucking deal. Don't have a Senate hearing. What the fuck? Why, what you're saying is why didn't, if I may, I'm going to ask if this is what you're saying. Sure. Are you saying this? Why didn't the NSA pull the NCCIS part, the, the cybersecurity people of the of Homeland the Security? Homeland Security. Why Pull didn't the two departments talk to each other? Right, and go, hey. Hey, that, this is the fucking thing, deal. That thing you're looking at, um, it's us. But we, we, it's classified, so just Just shut it. the, just move along, yeah, change the subject, right. and let it go. Right. But no, we had <clears throat> but, to drag this out on fucking C-SPAN. But isn't that kind of cool that it's exposed? Because, oh, absolutely. Like, see, so but the, uh, Symantec would have exposed it either. So even if the de- even if the Department of Homeland but Security, but that wouldn't have gotten the news that a government entity exposing it would. Like, even if the Department of Homeland Security director was not interviewed, the story still holds water from everybody else they talked to. Right? Yeah. I don't think that they that guy wasn't that whole section didn't need to happen because somebody didn't pick up the fucking phone. Well, no, I I found it very interesting. Is oh yeah, the thing is, well, once again. It is a covert operation. They can't tell them. Well, they can't. The NSA, the DHS doesn't have authority or the clearance to be told well, what all the they NSA do is, is doing. All you got to do is, hey, don't do that. I know, but have his boss go, don't do that. That's it. I'm I'm wondering though if they can't even do that because that alone already makes it you know obviously it's something, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I wonder if that, if doing that make starts is already too much. To say don't do it is already being culpable to the things they've done. Does that make sense? Yes. To maybe internally, obviously. Not I understand. To us. I'm just wondering what the legalese of that. But yeah, you're. I agree with you. Like, hey, uh, that was us. But it was really interesting the way he talked about and exposed how it worked and how like it affects them. But then they asked him. They said. Somebody asked me if I thought it was us, and it didn't even cross my mind. Do you remember that? Yes. Did not even cross my mind to think that we were the ones that made it. I found that interesting, too. Yeah. So I find that cool, kind of kind of cool in a way that they looked at the problem without an agenda, in a way. like Because yeah. that would have been semi-agenda driven. They're like, hey, was this us? Right. Like, right. It would already t- twist it. Without just looking at the numbers Correct. or the data. A preconceived so I, notion. Right. I found that very objective and I found yeah. that very refreshing in a weird way. Even though I found it naive, I found it refreshing. I just found it focused. I found it stupid. My second point was that... <laughs> Did I, you my, really? Yeah, my second yet? point was that the Iranian gentleman that they interviewed, I don't know his title, but his point regarding... Hey, if you're a young Iranian... The American Iranian Council guy, the executive director, very handsome, well-spoken Amazing, short, nice beard. Yes. Great hair. Yeah. Um, Great hair, beautiful eyes. Dark skin, lovely gentleman. Olive skin. He spoke with his, had a semi-British act, just well-spoken, well-educated. You could tell he was very well-spoken, yes. His point about... I had a man crush. Yeah, me too. Uh, If you're a young person in Iran regardless of your gender and you are made aware that the U S and or Israel launched a cyber weapon on your nuclear production facility, then, then your country creates a cyber army of its own. Don't you, his point was that attack against Iran could galvanize the country and bring them even closer together that they have a, that America and Israel truly are more evil than we already thought they were. So you've got all these people 
enlisting into the cyber army to learn about the internet and cybersecurity and malware and all this shit. And I thought his point was, holy shit, he's totally right. We just, we just, it's like a, the a U.S. recruitment video. Exactly. You stole my line. Absolutely right. It's a recruitment video for their stupid cyber army, which is a terrible term. But yeah, the I, I love it's like capital I, lowercase r, period, C A. Why well, not just the I C A? What, what's the I C A? Is it, is it stepping on some other agencies? Probably. Type? The ICA? I, the ICA. Oh, I, I just ICA. thought his point was. Well, wow. the, well, when he said galvanized, it was funny when he talked about the initial galvanizing of the country with the nuclear part to begin with, just yeah. the nuclear part. But then he was saying, like, you're destroying the nuclear reactors. Yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to sign up. It's easy. It doesn't. You're not losing your life typing in fucking letters into a keyboard. Cor you're probably that not going to get easier fucking blown job. Up. You're fucking. It'll give you a skill. It makes it probably. It speaks to your intelligence level to begin with. So like. That's a great fucking opportunity that any young person want. Hey, carry a rifle or click a fucking mouse from the comfort of your home. Right. Like, which one do you think you're going to join? Yeah. You know, march in the sand or whatever, heat or fucking ceiling fans. Ceiling fan and air conditioning. That's what I'm talking both, about. Both of them. A little iced tea. Both of them. <laughs> Evaporative coolers. All also. that shit. Yeah, just in case. Uh, um, my last point. I will save towards the end. Do you have anything else to add on this amazing documentary? Where are we at then? Um, it was just interesting. They implicated U.S. There's a real. I look if it, if if that's who did it. I think that was incorrect. I think it was an act of war that's really fucked up. Because what I did find interesting about the one Secretary of State, the or I'm sorry, the CIA NSA guy. Yeah, the yeah. guy standing with Bush in the pictures and yes. the guy. The ball guy with the coke and the yeah. If it's clear, I can't talk about it. <laughs> I don't know, I but if yeah. I did, I can't talk about I can't, it. He, I he, won't. He, he, ha, ha, ho, ho. Yeah, he. I liked him. I did. I liked his candor, and um, he just. Uh, what did he say at the end there about um, it needed to be stopped or slowed down or or whatever? What was the other part that I ah? Oh, I had a good part. Damn I lost it. it. Man, today's brain. It is freaking brain, brain fart Sunday. Day. Brain. Not not sun not like Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. ice cream Sunday brain it's fart brain Sunday. fart Sunday um, brain fart Sunday he oh man oh poop part darn it well hopefully we will get back to it what were we talking about before uh, I, I have one last point okay. go ahead just close it out man. my last point is that th towards the end of the documentary one of the people they were interviewing said is this the kind of world that we want to live in. And I was like, wow. Because regarding specifically the cyber attack and then the, the retaliation of uh, Iran against the banks and the whole malware and development of the Suxnet virus, is that the kind of world that we want to live in? Where countries are attacking other countries' networks. That's not the kind of world that I want to live in. Right. And that was my point about the Mike guy. The Mike guy said... When the United States initiated this act, they basically set a precedence. Oh, yeah. They made it now. Everyone's going to look and say, oh, that's okay then. And, th and that is a very true kind of statement. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, well, I guess we can do it then too. Correct. So now it's and the now new- now it's out of the box. Now it's the now, new- Cyber is the new nuclear. The new norm, right. Yes. And once again, you're, you're pay you don't have to pay them much- you don't pay fucking, you don't pay your army much. You could pay them half the amount you pay or, or whatever. Yeah. Hey, how'd you like to fly the drone rather than be the guy getting shot? Well, it'd be cool to fly one. Don't get me wrong. So like, how would you be, how would you rather fly a drone than, than be a grunt on the fucking ground? Yeah, of course. With a boot on the ground. Yeah. Like, I'm going to choose the, yeah, uh, the uh, joystick. I know. Uh, I would. Well, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. Resist the joystick. Whoa. Hey, yo. Um, yeah, but it was like, we set that precedence. Now it is going to happen where it's okay because the U.S. did it first. China, we know China, we know China and Russia are going to do it. We know oh, they've yeah. done it. We, of course. It's, and it's, look, my, my biggest concern is that would, it'll, it'll hurt the civilian population of a country. Yeah. And, I don't want that civilian population of the country to be us, ours. Like I just, or any. I'm not gonna. Well, no, don't. 
innocent of, people don't deserve. I don't want it to be anybody. Correct. But I definitely don't want it to be me. Well, no I'm shit. just saying. I know that. Sounds, I get it. I'm trying I, to be like honest about my my fear of this. Like, yeah. I don't want it to be me. No oh, shit. I don't want it to be anybody, but obviously both you or anybody nor anyone. Right. None. None of us. Both. Nuns. Both of everyone. Both of all of them. Both of every. Both of everybody. But it was really interesting how this thing was made. How it was so systemic, you know. Yeah. And then the question is: Was it? Was a previous version working? And there was no. We don't have any answer on that. But it is a curious question for me. Yeah. I know it eventually get caught up, but maybe by some point they would have gotten to some peace and it would have been water under the bridge a long time. You know what I mean? Right. In, in discovering it. Yeah. Like, not a re initiations like guys we knew this was happening anyway like you're right you guys were trying to get us to stop the whole time you know i know i know you know you know what i mean like <laughs> maybe it might have been to that point by the time they figured it out however the aggressiveness seemed to be pretty nasty and the problem with the aggressiveness is it wasn't confined to just the natan's facility right now correct it's, it's everywhere yeah so it's a little something to think about but they know about this yeah and then now there's hackers i mean it's easy. It'd probably be easier to get easier to get recruited for that than than another type of fighting. So cool. Very well, true. It was a very interesting documentary. Yeah, I wasn't blaming or pointing fingers. It it seemed to be very. W did this. Obama did this. Uh, you know, Nixon did that. Johnson did that. Uh, the Israelis did this. The NSA did that. This there was is, a lot of factual. Claims. Right. It wasn't like some oh, of it was so just people stating. And opinion. we we hope that they were telling the truth. Yeah, but it, we it don't. Opinion to it's them. you know when they when they interview an NSA person, we hope they're telling the truth. You know, but we don't know. Uh greed. Yeah. And on that note, that was a fun one. Yeah. Thank you for uh, sharing and watching that with me. No. Do you have any final thoughts on that? Uh, just the usual final thought: be excellent to each other. Party on. Yeah. <laughs>